Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today, like a good scientist, I'm following up on a previous experiment I did two weeks ago. Now, as you may recall, two weeks ago, during a 96% full moon, I did an experiment to verify whether or not moonlight was in fact cold. Now, the way that the experiment was set up is I took a double pane window of glass, and I put it on a couple of concrete blocks over an area of my yard. The reason that I used glass was that so moonlight would pass freely through it. My null hypothesis for this case was that moonlight was indeed cold. And since moonlight passed right through the glass, the temperature of the ground around the window and the temperature of the ground under the window would be the same. My alternative hypothesis was that supported by science. And that is that during the day, the Earth is heated by the sun, and at night, that heat radiates up into space. And that anything that is above the Earth, such as clouds, trees, tables, or even a pane of glass, would block and reflect that heat back down to the ground. As a result, the temperature underneath the glass would be warmer than on the lawn surrounding the glass. And I tested this several different ways to include shading part of the glass with that piece of plastic. I also tested under a tree. And my findings were quite conclusive. There was a 4 degree Fahrenheit difference between the ground under the glass and the ground around the glass. There was also a 4 degree difference under a tree compared to being out in the yard. And at that time, I reached the conclusion that it was highly unlikely that the moonlight had caused any cooling of the surrounding area, but did not cool the ground underneath the clear glass. Now, I did at that time announce that I was going to do a follow-up experiment when the new moon was out and we had no moonlight whatsoever. I was essentially going to repeat the entire experiment without using the moon at all. And that's what I did last night. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's not quite dark yet, but the sun is definitely down here at Shamrock Banks Observatory, and we're going to do our follow-up of the cold moonlight test. The moon is at 2% currently, and set uh, at seven o'clock, it's now nine o'clock. So here's our glass, and here are our concrete blocks. What we're gonna do, is we're gonna test the temperature of the ground, right here, so that's 70 degrees in the middle. 68 over here. 68 here. Recheck that again. That's actually 68 there. 68. 68. So I retested the center here. It says 70. 68 right next to it. 70 over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right over here where it's all 68 and I'm going to set the blocks up right here and we'll put the glass down and let it sit for 20-30 uh, minutes. Now on this go around I did a couple of things a little bit differently and I did them for very good reasons. For example, I didn't want to take any greenhouse effect into account so I left the glass upright and did not place it on the blocks until twilight and the sun was down. Then I also measured the temperature of the ground in the area where I was doing the experiment to make sure that it was uniform. You did notice that there was one spot of the ground that was a little bit warmer than the others. I wanted to make sure I was away from that. So I set the glass up basically in twilight. So starting from an even temperature baseline, let's see what happened. Okay, so just so we can see what we're doing here, here's the pane of glass, and we're gonna go ahead and check the temperature here. So, looks like I've got 64 degrees. 64 degrees. 64 degrees. And 64 degrees. Now, let's look underneath and see what it looks like under there. 68 degrees. Let's check a different spot. 68 degrees again.
68. 64. 68. Once again, absolutely no moon in the sky. No moon whatsoever. Okay, so the take-home points here is that First of all, we only had a 2% moon tonight, and it set several hours before I even set up the experiment. So the moon itself was not a factor in any way, shape, or form in this experiment tonight. Temperatures, as you noticed, were about 64 degrees on the ground. That's approximately the same as what it was during the first run two weeks ago. Now, as you recall, there were two things that we were testing tonight. First of all, we wanted to see whether or not the effect would occur without the moon in the sky. And second of all, we made some predictions concerning what would happen if it was heat radiating off the Earth towards space and simply being reflected by the glass, a table, a tree, or clouds. So to follow through on this, I went ahead and I measured the temperature on the ground next to a chair that had a piece of dark plastic on it. And then I measured under the chair to see if there was a difference in temperature. Likewise, I measured the open lawn again and then I measured under a large maple tree in my backyard. Let's go ahead and see the results of those measurements. So here we have a chair. Check the temperature on the top. 63 degrees. Check the temperature next to it. 64. 64 again. Let's look underneath the chair. Look at that. 66. Here's the tree in my backyard. So I'm going to come out under the sky and look at the ground temperature is 64 degrees. Let's come under the tree and look at that. Okay, so now that we've got everything done, let's go ahead and analyze our findings. First of all, we had the same four degree Fahrenheit change under the glass compared to the lawn that we had in full moonlight, even though there was no moon in the sky. We further demonstrated an increase in temperature in any area where there was a shaded area to reflect that radiated heat from the earth. We did it under a chair and we did it under a tree. The only logical conclusion that we can reach is that moonlight has no effect whatsoever on temperatures and that the most likely cause for the effect that has been so widely reported in the flat earth community is the radiated heat coming up from the ground. Now there's one more experiment that we can do that would put a final little twist in the destruction of this flat earth argument. Let's go ahead and repeat this on another night that's cloudy. Because on a cloudy night, I would expect that the heat radiating off of the earth would be reflected back by the clouds in addition to the glass. I still think that we are going to have a slight difference between underneath the glass or a chair or a tree than the yard. However, I think the difference is going to be much less because the yard is also going to be receiving reflected radiative heat. So the bottom line is this is a pretty cool science project for homeschoolers and it shows that you can do some pretty neat stuff in your own backyard. This is Bob the Science Guy. Make sure you drop me a follow and I'll see you again soon. Take care.